It's now time for the Sports Philosophy Show on News Talk 1650 WHKT. Tune in for the next hour as Jack Ankerson and Daryl Cummings give their insights on sports with outstanding guests. Follow the show on Facebook under the Sports Philosophy Show or go to thesportsphilosophyshow.com for more info. Listen to the show on your phone by downloading the TuneIn app and typing in WHKT. Now here is Jack Ankerson and Daryl Cummings. Once again, sparing no expense for guests on this show. Uh, the athletic director at Norfolk State University, uh, Marty Miller, is with us. Good afternoon, Mr. Miller. Uh, good afternoon. Hello, Marty. How are you doing today? Oh, we're having a good day here at the station, Marty, and I uh, hope everything's well there in Spartan land. Well, everything is going well as we prepare for the uh, Thanksgiving weekend. Okay, Marty, now let me ask you this question. I can't, I was trying to outline the number of halls of fame that you were a member of, and I uh, I kind of lost track after a half a dozen. <laughs> Well, I think, Jack, it's somewhere between five and six, somewhere in there. I don't think about it every day. <laughs> I understand that you don't. <laughs> but now you're in there, Marty, as, as a Hall of Famer for all of your accomplishments coaching and administering at the Norfolk State, basically. Isn't that not correct? Yes, it is. All right, so let's go back before that all began. Let's talk about your career as a collegiate athlete. Can we talk about that? Yeah, I mean, that's fine. Uh, you know, basically, uh, uh, I'm I'm a native of uh, Danville, Virginia, where I played baseball at uh, John M. Langston High School. And, uh, of course, when I left there, I came here to Norfolk State as a student athlete. So I have been associated with Norfolk State for a very long time, over 40 years. Over 40 years, yeah. Yeah, it's been a long time. Now, did you just play baseball, just baseball, when you were as an athlete, as an undergrad at Norfolk State? Yeah, I only played baseball uh, here at Norfolk State. But when I was in high school, I played ba- both baseball and basketball. Point guard? Uh, no, I wasn't a point guard. I was a shooting guard. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> I get it. Yeah. All right, give me the ball. <laughs> well, I mean, that, that's still a point guard, isn't it, Marty? It doesn't mean that your, your point was to shoot it, not to pass it, right? <laughs> exactly right. <laughs> I did not control the game. <laughs> okay. So you were not recruited to play basketball at Norfolk State? No, just, just baseball. Just baseball. Because that was my primary sport. And your position in baseball? Well, I started out as a uh, third baseman. Then I played shortstop. My last two years, I played outfield. Okay. An outfielder. Yeah, the coach indicated, Coach Eccles indicated that he wanted to try to utilize my speed more so in the outfield. Ah, and had a great arm, I'm sure. Uh, Well, let's just say I got the job done. You got the job done. I I understand that. I get that. So then the baseball career, did you, uh, then you, uh, as as the story goes, uh, there were some people looking at you to sign a professional contract. Well, basically, yeah, I was being uh, scouted when I was in in college. In fact, I I was scouted in high school. Uh, I know mostly by the Baltimore Orioles at that time because... What happened is in the state championship uh, series, that, that series we had, I had a great weekend, and the Baltimore Orioles was, uh, were very interested in signing me out of high school. But, of course, as the story goes, which I've told my mother, right. uh, did not allow me to sign That's out of right. high school. You were going to get an education, and right? You said I was going to go come to Norfolk State and get a degree. As and, you did, and you did, and I did. I was a, a math major when I was in college, and of course, when I was here. In fact, the ironic thing about this, when I was in school, which the rules and all were different then, even um, the tides, uh, which was associated, uh, which they are now during that era, I think they were affiliate of the, of the Mets then, or I'm not really sure. This was back in the late '60s. But I also know they had an interesting look, and they took a look at me uh, wow. during my career here. Dave Rosenfield wow. was, was involved during that era. So, yes, there I was being scouted in, in high school, I mean, in college as well. And when I left, I actually ended up signing with the Twins. Okay. Uh, I was, in fact, I was on active duty. Because, you know, I was an ROTC. Right. Yeah, that's right. I got commissioned at graduation. Yeah, I got commissioned at graduation, and I had to go in. But while I was on active duty, I was signed by the Twins. 
Oh. Now, now, Marty, how did you go from being a standout player like that? How did you get involved in, in, in the, using the math degree and involved in the coaching? <laughs> I mean, were, were you the first money ball coach? Is that why you majored in math? And, and, uh, I don't know about all that. You know, it just that doing – the time I was in college, I really loved numbers. I, I love uh, mathematics. I've always did. And truthfully, I, I tried to use that in in my uh, approach to hitting a baseball and try to use all those analytical skills I suppose I've had to determine how I could become a better hitter and a better player. Mm -hmm. So, But the thing of it is, is that I've always loved math. And, but I also love baseball because I started playing baseball when I was five years old. Hmm. And uh, it just seemed to have worked for me uh, during my career. So uh, your your coaching career at Norfolk State uh, was filled with uh, some significant uh, success. And then uh, you retired from the coaching, became the athletic director, and um, – Coach Clark now, I believe, is now your baseball coach. Is 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 that correct? That's correct. In fact, when I was asked to uh, assume the role as the uh, athletic director, in fact, it was during the season, at the beginning of the season, and Claudel Clark was my assistant coach at that time. So when I had to make the transition, uh, which was very quickly, I just appointed him to serve as the uh, interim coach head coach at that time because we didn't have time to go out and find a coach. But he's done a, a very good job, and he's still on the staff now. Is it safe to say probably under all the uh, of all the coaches there at Norfolk State, he's probably the one under the most pressure, huh? Be because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I wouldn't want to be in his situation. I mean, he, he probably gets an extra call to the office <laughs> once or twice a week, right? M more than the yeah. football coach, right? No, I don't do that. One of the things I try to do is not to interfere because every coach has his or her coaching style. And the one thing, I don't go to as many baseball games as most people think because – when I get out there, they say I get excited mm -hmm. <laughs> and want to call pitches and everything of that nature. But uh, but no, we we have uh, we work very well together, and it's working out very well. Mm -hmm. Marty, you've got how many intercollegiate sports under your sort of under your well, what's the right word? I want your control, so to speak, at uh, at Norfolk State. How many? We have uh, fifteen sports programs here at North State, eight women and seven men. Eight, eight women and seven men. Now, you just completed the football season, just ended. Yes. And in conference play, you did end up four and four. Yes, we did. Uh, I, I, we ended up tied for sixth place. Uh, it was Latrell Scott's first year. Right. In fact, if you go back and look at our, our scores, we were basically in in most in all of those football games. The only one that we had a very difficult time with was the A and T, but the other three that we lost, we were right there to the end. So it could have gone uh, either way for us, which is happened. We just lost those games, but we could have won those as well. So the future is bright in the football at Price Stadium. I think so. In fact, uh, we are encouraged about what happened this year because we think. It provides the foundation for our success that we think we're going to have next year. Very, mm -hmm. very good. And now your basketball team, moving on to your men's and women's basketball teams, of course those seasons just started off just recently, uh, your, bas your men's team took some hits, right? I mean, by way of losses of players. Yeah. Oh, yes, yeah. Well, the, the biggest loss we had, of course, was uh, we call our big man, our center. Uh, who transferred basically about a week before, uh, and and this, the year started, and we didn't get the or did not have the opportunity to recruit, yeah. and that's is really hurting us right now on the inside. But I think this team is going to rebound and do well, mainly because uh, Coach Jones has changed his style. Um, in fact, he's looked at the Warriors because. He's trying to emulate some of the things that they're doing on the court. Well, the one uh, thing he doesn't have, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't have it, but we try to develop okay. it very quickly before the uh, conference schedule starts. <laughs> oh, I see. Okay. Now, Marty, that brings to mind you, you lost the big, the big guy right before school. What, what do you suppose enters the minds of some of these young men, young ladies, when they decide to transfer like that at that stage of their careers? Well, 
when he approached it, it, it was like we we didn't believe it. Very perplexing at that point because we couldn't understand why right. a, uprise, uh, a rising senior would want to transfer, especially with the fact that well, we were expected to do so well with him in our lineup. Right. But I think sometimes some of these student athletes get the idea that they can go on to another another program and have greater success. Uh, and then you have some student athletes who think that they are actually preparing themselves for the next level, and I think think they get confused sometimes. Well, yeah, yeah, that get confused. That's what now, it is. Now, speaking of the next level, there, Marty, uh, when your basketball program goes out there and they beat Mizzou in in the NCAA tournament, with you being the athletic director, a former player, former cro- uh, a coach there. Does that put a little extra pep in your step when you're walking around campus when, when you when you get those nice wins against Mizzou on, on a national audience? Well, I can tell you as far as my career, especially being an athletic administrator, I would have to say that was one of the greatest highlights of my career because mm-hmm. uh, we were such underdogs uh, in, in that tournament, and, and we really had a very, very good team that performed well that game. But it did add a lot of uh, – it, it gave us a lot of uh, confidence. You could see the esprit de corps really pick up on campus. And it really brought a lot of life to this campus. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that, that's great. I, I mean, we, I think the whole community here was excited when, when that was going on. I, I think people who didn't even go to Norfolk State were buying jerseys saying they graduated from there to, to add greater value to their uh, – to their life and so forth. Now, well, you know, let me say something. In fact, when we were after we won that game, we were out in uh, Omaha. All of the North State uh, uni- uh, University's apparel sold out. Wow! You know, it, it was an amazing sight to see individuals just buying our T-shirts and sweatshirts. And in fact, they were asking for more. Mm-hmm. And in fact, some people even uh, requested bought some of our T-shirts and other apparel out of our bookstore after that. Wow. It was amazing. Now, now on another note, Marty, um, it, uh, I don't want us to run out of time before we mm-hmm. uh, touch on this. Um, I happened to be at a meeting yesterday that, that uh, you were at, and we had some very nice uh, local businesses, uh, about 12 individuals in, in this uh, room at, mm-hmm. at, at Beskin and Associates. And um, uh, you, you have some new tennis courts there, and it, and it sounded like from yesterday's meeting that we, we were raising about $30,000 for some scoreboard opportunities for the, for the tennis program, along with doing some future uh, tennis events there that, that uh, would be very stimulating for uh, the community and also for the, the Norfolk State brand. Uh, that was a pretty exciting meeting yesterday, I, I, I believe. I'd like to get your thoughts on that. Well, well with you being there, it, made, it created more excitement. Oh, but, but, oh, Marty. Marty, <laughs> Jack gets jealous. Hey, you, you well, can't, Jack, Jack, Jack is sensitive <laughs> about this kind of stuff. I'm okay? sorry to say that, but let me say that on behalf of North State, uh, I, I was very excited to be a part of that meeting because to bring the individuals who attended that meeting, especially from the tennis community, it was exciting to the fact that we see that this is going to be a great endeavor for us to have so many partners in the community to get involved with us with our tennis program. We are excited here because we have a new tennis course. We're trying to, to actually do some enhancement to what we have, the scoreboard and some of uh, the other areas. And but just to see those individuals as excited as we are about improving our tennis courts, it, it was a very good feeling, and we think some great things are going to come out of, of that meeting. Well, well, Marty, the your, your presence uh, it, that was one of the first times I think I've been in a meeting with you. I, I've heard some of these meetings that you have with your coaches are um, sort of legacy in, in, in type, but but <laughs> all I know is. <laughs> This meeting started with zero dollars, and we were 15 <laughs> minutes into it. And with your presence and your posture, we were at thirty thousand dollars after 15 minutes. And 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 I, I was afraid uh, uh, you know, uh, people were getting home equity loans uh, and everything yesterday. So you, you, it's a heck of a job, and and uh, and there's good things going on there at Norfolk State. And and, uh, and and Jack and I are very excited about having you on the show here too. 
Well, I, I, I really appreciate this opportunity to tell part of our story because there are a number of great things taking place here at the university. And I think the, the good news will continue in the near future, and I'm just thankful to have you all to be a part of this and to believe in us. And, Marty, one other highlight, uh, many highlights coming your way, of course, but there is a highlight later on this month, or later on in December, when your basketball team will be over at the Constance Center taking on Old Dominion this year. That's true. After 15 years, I think the community is ready for, is ready for that game, Jack. And I think it's going to have great attendance. In fact, I expect a sellout. I would certainly think so. What, Marty, when I first came here with the Squires back in those days, I remember going to Scope. And when Norfolk State and Old Dominion played, it was one of the greatest environments and atmospheres that I've ever been been exposed to. Well, it was a lot of fun. In fact, a lot of people remember those games, and I'm really excited to see that we were able to get back on the schedule and, and actually duplicate what we did because, I mean, it was so much fun. Yes, yeah. that's exactly right. Fun for all everybody. It was, it was really good. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Miller, we appreciate your time. We hope to enjoy Thanksgiving with you and your family, and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank you, and I wish you. Uh, the best and a, a safe and a happy Thanksgiving for you all and your families. In fact, I wish that for people all over the world. Very good. Thank you, Marty. All right. Take care. Talk to you soon.